right guys, so I'm making this right here as a quick little intro. This project kind of turned into a nightmare. The intermodal cars that I bought from uh, trains.com were awesome, but my train engine is a complete nightmare. Um, you'll see throughout the video, this is a long video of kind of what happens. Long story short, the front motor does not pull. Um, the rear motor was stuck. The description said two powerful motors, it ran and everything. I bought it. Sounds great, but this thing does not work. So I need you guys' opinion on what I should do next. Um, being that I already took it apart, I doubt that trains.com will fix it. Who knows? If they don't, that's fine. I'll have to just find somebody to pay them. But all right, guys, watch the video. Check it out. All right, guys. This is me patiently waiting on my FedEx delivery from trains.com. I'm very lucky and live close and normally get it next day. It is a Saturday scheduled to be here at two o'clock. Fingers crossed, we'll be doing a uh, unboxing momentarily. Or right, this is just a little bit of, uh, I don't know, grabbing a little bit of content while uh, waiting. So we have a Conrail SD60 Mac. Yeah, SD60 Mac Conrail. And some uh, spine cars. So we're waiting on them to get here. We'll see y'all when they get here. All right, guys. So here we go with the unboxing of the new locomotive and the new train cars. Um, Guys, I'm super stoked. Next day delivery with trains.com. I'm just so happy. So I'm not sure what's in this one. We're gonna go ahead and open it up first. I'm recording my building today. Normally I have my son with me on Saturdays. So the, the goal for this channel, hopefully we can keep everything rolling like we've been. And maybe we can do like an unboxing every Saturday. And that just depends on what we can find that we can do an unboxing. I just got lucky this week and had a little bit of extra money, so we were able to buy a couple of things and um, put it back toward our project. Trains.com, and it looks like we have the intermodal set. Damn! Sorry for the language. That is huge. This makes, whoa, this makes me want to buy the other set. Look at this. Look at this, guys. Hold on. Look at this. And uh, for the record, I am having a cold beer. I've been up since 1 a.m. I went to work for about five hours this morning. And you know what? There's nothing better than cold beer and trains. So we're going to get this one opened up first. This is going to be a dual unboxing video. I thought about just doing like a... Uh, like a separate video for each one, but you know what? We're going to go ahead and do them both. So let me get the camera set back up at a good angle. We'll get this thing opened. We'll see what it looks like, and then we'll do the other unboxing. Like I said, I got this from trains.com. I'm not sure. I believe this was manufactured in the 90s. So yeah, built one of 94 for the age of this thing, guys. I mean, it looks like it's been box kept. Oh man, the almighty spine car with the Canadian National stackers, Canadian National logos. Let's gently take this out and give it a look over. Um, I believe I got this on trains.com for about, oh, where's that paper? I want to say it was like $65. Um, I, I've actually had it in my cart quite a few times because I almost bought it a couple weeks ago, then I backed out, I didn't get it. And I, I was thinking about getting it, and I didn't get it. I bought another train engine instead. So there is another bogey there. Um, this right here is to create another spine car. So eventually, guys, um, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We just got to, you know, keep our views up and everything like it is. And hopefully whenever some revenue starts to come in on this channel, we're going to keep keep uh you know keep up the progress of this uh 
this layout. So put that up there. Well, I know where it is. So let's take our our little stackers out. You know, personally, I know a lot of people are, uh, you know, like they're they're fans of certain things. So like RBP trains, he's a big KB fan. I'm a CSX fan. I grew up on the Norfolk Southern Main Line. I seen the train every day. I never once seen a CSX on that line ever. You might get a couple of Burlington Northern Santa Fe's, you know, that came through. That was it. Now, in the early 2000s, I'm guessing whenever the uh, the merger was, or closer to whenever the merger was of the Conrail CSX merger and all that stuff, we should see there would be like uh, two Conrail helpers and then like a Norfolk Southern lead. I miss those days. I miss seeing Conrails on the Norfolk Southern line. We used to see them all the time. And I'm talking about from like 2001, no, 2002 till about six or seven, maybe a little bit further. Now it's about that. We used to see them every day. Me and my brother used to run down there and go watch the trains go by. It was super fun. But you know, we never seen Canadian Nationals, nothing like that. Now, if, you, if you're wondering what line we grew up on, so it'd be the Norfolk Southern, um, I believe we're the Piedmont District. So it's the district that runs from Atlanta to Greenville, and then from Greenville to Spartanburg, Spartanburg to um, Charlotte, North Carolina, and so forth. So it's the Crescent. So like the, the CSX that, not the CSX, sorry. The um, Amtrak that actually comes through our through our <clears throat> through our line, and it comes through at like seven in the morning, roughly, and about ten o'clock at night. It, it goes from New Orleans to I think New York. Don't quote me on that. But we grew up seeing that. Look at there. God, that is a nice fine car. So before we do the unboxing. Should we go ahead and put this on the line and just see how it looks with our uh, our other set? So I did take off my CSX powered units here, and that's in preparation for what we've got coming, which is in this box. Hmm, let's check it out. So you see we've got our intermodal stack, which we have three of. Let's go ahead and get these Canadian Nationals on the line. Now, I will say, these intermodal cars are older, of course, than, let's see, these TTXs. So, I don't know what the build date is of these. Build date, uh, 2020. So, these have die-cast trucks, die-cast couplers, which these are plastic. So, all of this stuff here is plastic, but you know what? It looked like it hitched good. This is going to be a massive train, so it's going to, it's really going to do it. There's just something about intermodals that I love, and, and I honestly, it's, it's because it goes back to where I grew up. A lot of the traffic that was on our line was intermodals. That was, that's probably 80% of the traffic right now. Um, I would say honestly is intermodal stuff. So well, let's go to the next unboxing and let's see if this one train can pull all of these cars or this one engine. So let's check it out. All right, so here we go on the big enchilada. Hopefully, uh, what I hope, which I'm probably, it's probably not gonna happen. I'm hoping that this single engine can pull this entire 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 car train. Now, on a flat layout, anything could pull it. Even one of these, like this, this um, Dash 8 could pull it with no problem. I've got grades, we're talking like 30 foot grades, 
like 30 foot long grades at like two and a half to three percent and uh, I actually calculated the mount and everything so yeah we we've got some struggle on on this line so normally I have to run two engines in order to uh, to make enough power like two of these these line chief engines in order to make enough power to uh, to pull these trains and sometimes if I take all of my cars together I'll have to have like two DPUs or a rear just to help get them to the curves without the cars rolling off. So that's why I'm, I'm probably pushing it with this mini cars just because of my curves. Um, but we'll see how it does. I'm super stoked. All right, so I've also been keeping all my line L boxes. I've got a humongous collection of line L boxes up here. So there's our paperwork I probably should read. I will keep them though. Oh my god. Alright, so we do have some scraggly pieces. Now this, this train here, or this engine here was only like $139 and they have another one listed right now I think for like $170 or $200 and something. So it's probably got some problems, but probably nothing that we can't uh, fix, address, or overcome. We'll have to see what we got. I mean, I read the description, but I don't think I read the full description. Because this is pretty loose. Okay, that's normal. Wow, that thing's got a humongous motor in it. Damn. There's a lot of copper. That is a big motor. That is a big brushed motor, it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that. So this is a uh, this is a SD60 Mac. The M is for Mac. To what my researchers told me, of course. Um, pretty sure that's what it is. So it, it said that it required a 9 volt battery. According to reading, uh, reading the instructions. So well, you got to find out where the battery goes, first off. I don't know why it said that. i got to figure out what this is. Probably need to read the instructions. Because it did say requires an ammo. Hold on. Right here. This is where I've seen it. Uses 9-volt battery not included. So we got to find out where that 9-volt, and that's why we have instructions. So this has got the, the magnet track traction. Damn. This is beefy. Interesting. So that one free spins, this one don't. I wonder why that is. I don't know. Like on a Lion Chief, they don't do that. If DC current is used, rail sounds Two must be disconnected. All right, so the battery goes in the top. Look at here. What? The volume control right here. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Volume control. So I gotta figure out what the build year of this thing is because it's obviously old. I mean, it, it's. It's definitely old, but I got a feeling it's going to be some really strong power. Look at here, flashing light. They definitely have this hidden. I don't want to break nothing. So what I'm going to probably do, carefully slide the battery tray off. Look at there. Let me go find my batteries and we'll put it in here right quick because I don't know what that does. All right, so now we got this. I got a brand new battery. Let's, I, you know, I don't know what this is going to do. So uh, I really probably should have armature bearing lubrication. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into these. Um, this is definitely a lot older engine and I'm gonna have to probably maintenance this one a lot heavier than I do my other ones which is fine 
I used to be a, uh, or I used to work in industrial maintenance, so it's going to be nothing. So let's just take a quick little look here. What were these? Let's find out what these came off of. The other one's floating somewhere. There's that, that, that. We will find that other little piece. Interesting, interesting, interesting. There's really nothing more we can do but to put it on the rails. Um, so this one doesn't have like the little rubber grommets that grip the wheel. So I wonder if we're going to, you know, be able to get traction. We should be able to. Um, I'm just going to study over this manual, make sure I don't miss anything. And then we're going to put it down here on the line and see what it does. But before I do that, I want to do a thorough little investigation on everything on this because this is new to me. As you see, I've got um, line to you stuff. And I'll already say that this engine right here is probably, oh God, it's probably two pounds heavier than this one. I know, I mean, this thing is heavy. This one is pretty light. So if this works like I think it's gonna work, I'll probably get some more of these. Um, I wanted a transformer ran engine for the simple fact is I can cut it on and walk away from it where the line chiefs, you, you leave them running for an hour or two hours, batteries go dead on one remote and you're dragging a train or either the, or you're dragging a car, or sorry, you're dragging an engine because the engine quit. So yeah, that gets slightly annoying. I wanted something that I could just put in the yard, pull the train around, good. So I'm gonna do a thorough investigation and then we're gonna put it on the tracks and energize it. So let's do that first. All right, so I read my instructions this thing is from 1994. I believe I've got everything cut on correctly. Um, so for the engine sounds, on and on should be. So unit reversing switch. I don't think we need to do that. We got diesel noise on. I'm gonna go put this thing on the track and we're gonna energize it, so. Let's see if it'll run. All right, so I'm fixing over to my transformer, put a little power on it. This thing is huge. I don't even know if it'll clear the cutouts in my doorway right here. I mean, this thing's huge. So let's put a little bit of power to it and see if, if anything happens. All right, so first off, the sound on this thing is freaking incredible. I think what I'm gonna do is detach this and let's just test it going back and forth and figure out what we got to do with our uh, controller here or my transformer so my transformer is this right here and i have a backup so let's see what it does This is kind of turned into a nightmare. Um, I realized why it was only $135. The rear motor was completely locked down. I got it tore apart and I've got it broke free. So now it spins like it should and runs. Now the bad part is that I don't, I don't know if the front, yeah. So the front, is not pulling at all. So we gotta do some diagnosis here. I'm gonna have to get in here and see if something has broke or come apart. 
like a drive line type thing and fix this. Definitely something I can do. I just gotta find out why. I don't want to scar. So as this motor rotates, it should be turning our drive motors or our drive wheels and it's not. So right now it's just running off back wheels. It's not a good thing. I'm gonna to have to figure out what the hell's going on. That kind of makes me mad. Um, luckily I had my penetrate null and I was able to break loose the, the rear engine. For the rear motor. So it's spinning freely. This one is just not connected for some reason. So <sighs> always something guys, it's always something. I'm gonna to try to figure out what this is. Cause I want to get it. Um, I just had it moving on the line, but like I said, it's only pulling by the back set of trucks. I want all of them to run. So that means I'm going to have to tear into this thing and fix it. It's uh, got to be something simple, but it's got to get into it. And it's all good. So I'm going to do that right quick. Look at that. This is done turn into a maintenance video or a an overhaul video. Damn it. This is not how I was wanting to spend my day. So this kind of turned into a nightmare situation. Um, I'm probably gonna have to wind up singing this off, unfortunately. So whatever connects these drive wheels to this motor is no longer connected. And I tried to get to it I couldn't. So we're gonna just run it for right now with rear motors, rear motor. Um, I really wish I knew where my actual screwdriver set is. I think I took them in the damn house. I'm gonna get this back together. We're gonna to run it on the line right quick. I'm kind of getting frustrated with this thing right now. So we're gonna to have to send this thing off to either Lionel or um, like a rebuilder of a Lionel engine scope. I want this thing to run. Um, I do. I, I want to be able to run this thing. I did find out the date of this engine. It's from 2000, sorry, 94. 94. So it's pretty old. Um, we should be able to still get it rebuilt and running. Uh, the sounds and everything of this thing is pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie to you on that. Um, Everything else though is pretty, pretty junk. So I read, reread the description and it said that this thing ran. So I don't know what happened. Um, why it doesn't work now. It's kind of a bummer. I was really looking forward to uh, really putting this thing through its paces this weekend. And we might still with just the rear motor. Um, if it burns up, it'll make good content. We'll just have to have it rebuilt. <sighs> Always something. Always something. So the front motor is not pulling the axles. I'm missing something. Yep, I am. So this actually turned into a nightmare. Um, this engine's a dud. Unfortunately, the front motors are not pulling and it has no power I'm going to go turn up the amps just a little bit oh, so if anybody on here knows anything about sending something off and getting it rebuilt this is definitely something I want to get fixed right now we're only pulling the with the rear motors the front ones aren't connected you can see it's it's struggling pretty bad i want to go turn it wide open and just give it all the beans i'm gonna make sure all my switches are thrown oh what a disaster let's go ahead and give it wide open throttle so wide open of course it's running 
but that's it's only going to pull. You see, it's it's having a hard time. I'm having to like assist it. The front up there is throwing crazy sparks. I'm about to uh, just go ahead and take it off the line. Oh, this is not. Good. All right, guys. I'm not sure what's going on, but this damn thing is smoking. Oh man, this is not good. We're only pulling the uh, the rear. I'm about to go figure out what's going on. All right, so I uh, got it back apart. I'm not sure what in the world is going on. So if anybody that watches this video can help me, I will be grateful. So this one's spinning. This one's not. This thing needs a good rebuild. I'm not gonna put it back on the line. Don't wanna burn anything up. This is a really nice engine. This is my parts that I have left. Okay, um, you guys have a good one. We'll see you on the next one.